Hi, I'm your host, Dave Kemp, and this is Future Ear Radio. Each episode, we're breaking down one new thing, one cool new finding that's happening in the world of hearables, the world of voice technology. How are these worlds starting to intersect? How are these worlds starting to collide? What cool things are going to come from this intersection of technology? Without further ado, let's get on with the show. All right, I'm joined here by Catherine Prescott today. Catherine, say hello and introduce to the audience a little bit about who you are, what you do. Hi, Dave. First of all, thank you so much for having me. I am very excited to be here with you today. I'm Catherine Prescott. I'm the founder and editor of Voice Brew. Voice Brew is a daily email newsletter that helps people get the most out of Alexa. We started in January and we're now over 30,000 email subscribers. We also publish comprehensive guides on our website covering all of the key Alexa features from routines to smart homes to the best Alexa games to topics like privacy. And our mission is really to help people get the most out of Alexa. We all know that millions of people have access to Alexa, but the vast majority of those people are barely at the tip of the iceberg when it comes to what they're getting out of Alexa. And I really want to help change that with Voice Brew. Totally. Well, awesome. Thank you for coming on. I mean, folks that are Future Ear fans will know this is actually my first guest ever. So, of course, I had to go out, get somebody awesome like Catherine. So, really excited to have you on today. And the reason I'm bringing Catherine on is because there was a Canalis report that came out um, really highlighting the smart speaker shipments from Q3. And there were a couple of takeaways from this report. But the one that I really wanted to talk to you about is this whole idea of the explosive growth around smart displays, and really the emergence of multimodal. So for the listeners, can you kind of walk through some of the key findings from this report? Definitely. So just to level set, the headline here for this report is that close to 30 million smart speakers shipped globally in Q3. And Amazon had about 37% share of those shipments, which was kind of surprisingly, about 2.5 times Alibaba, which came in second. Remember, this is global. But even more surprisingly, three times Google's share of Q3 shipments. So those are kind of the, the first headlines. But, you know, as Dave mentioned, and what I found most exciting about this report and our topic today is the role that smart displays played in these big numbers. So the, for the first time, smart displays were greater than 20% of quarterly smart speaker shipments. And that comes out to about 6.3 million shipped globally, smart displays shipped globally in Q3 alone. Mm -hmm. And that's a lot. Um, about 2.2 million of those were Echo smart speakers, I'm sorry, smart displays. Mm -hmm. and these numbers were primarily driven by the introduction of the Echo Show 5 over the summer, which we can talk a little bit about. But this, when I saw this come out, I was extremely excited because the Echo Show 5 was really the first affordable smart display in the Echo lineup, but really the first affordable smart display um, on the market. It's priced at $90, and you can often see it on sale for as little as $65. Mm -hmm. So I think it's not that surprising that this was sort of the device to drive, you know, these exciting smart display shipment statistics that we're seeing. Yeah, no, I totally agree. And I, you know, I remember back when the Echo Show 5 came out, um, you and some other folks were really hyping this because, and I, I was right there with you, because it, it really is a, this, a change in terms of how we think about voice technology and voice first. Um, and this idea of adding a screen, I think, really opens up the whole paradigm to a, a bunch of new use cases and a bunch of exciting things. And, you know, I think the Echo Show 5 in particular, you know, I think I saw in there that it was, it contributed to 16% of Amazon's overall global shipments. So if Amazon shipped out over 10.5 million devices total uh, and 16% 
you know, of those were the Echo Show 5 alone. We know that, you know, at this point, roughly just under 2 million people have this device now. And again, this is a low cost. Uh, five, the 5 represents 5 inches. So I have one in my office right now. Um, but I think that, you know, it's going to be really popular in uh, people's kitchens, people's homes. Um, but I think before we get really into that, you made a really interesting point uh, a little while back around how multimodal in particular kind of represents voice first. Can you speak to that? Absolutely. So just taking a step back, you know, all of us in the voice community, we throw around the term voice first all the time. <laughs> but the way that people, that most people still really experience voice technology is voice only. You talk to Alexa with your voice and Alexa talks back from you to you from your smart speaker. And what's exciting about multimodal devices like the Echo Show 5 is that they let you have a truly voice first experience where Alexa can both tell you things and show you things. And I think that this opens up a whole new set of use cases, which we can talk about. And also what, what people sometimes miss is that it also improves even the most basic use cases today. So take something like kitchen timers, you know, it doesn't get more basic than that. Mm -hmm. It's a lot better if you're setting multiple kitchen timers to be able to see them mm -hmm. on your Echo Show display than to have to listen to Alexa rattle off, you know, multiple updates on all your timers when you want to know how much time is, is left on one of them. Um, but, you know, at the same time, another important point that this Canalis report makes is that pragmatic use cases for smart displays largely remain to be seen at this point. And I do think that that's fair. I'm curious to hear your thoughts on that, Dave. Well, I know that, you know, we're going to kind of break this into a two-part episode and we're going to really dive into some of what I consider to be what will be pragmatic, pragmatic use cases for smart displays. But I want to stick on this point for a little bit longer because I, you, you make such a good point there, which is that, you know, the smart speakers have been proliferating for a really long time. And, um, you know, in, in terms of like relative to how long they've been out, um, they've really exploded in, in growth and in the penetration rate that they're having. And, you know, you make such a good point there because it really is a device that's very voice only. And I think that part of the reason we see usage as high as we do on, uh, for voice assistance on mobile devices is just like you said, it, it's, it's not necessarily limited to just voice functionality, but it enables it and it adds elements to it that voice only devices don't like a smart to speak a smart speaker so having that display i think really does to your point it makes it more of a voice first device where you're the first thing that you think of is i'm going to talk to this device but it because it's got different modalities that it can you know uh, spit that information back out to you i think that it it's sort of a nice hybrid of like uh, a bit of a you know, a bridge to where we're going. And I think like Brett Kinsella always points this out is that smart speakers in particular are like train wheels where it helps you to get into the habit of thinking, why don't I just ask that, you know? And I think that by still allowing there to be a screen, considering how conditioned we are with using screens, I think that that enables people to sort of, uh, I guess the output, you know, taking the information that's coming out from the voice assistant is still sort of in the legacy form factor, but it's the way that we're inputting it that's changed. And I think that's a really powerful thing. Um, so I guess like, you know, for the, for the end of this first part of the discussion, talk a little bit about what you were saying before we started recording about the whole chicken and egg dynamic here. Yeah. So I think, you know, what follows the points that you just made is that, Right now, there aren't a ton of high quality multimodal experiences. And one of the reasons for that is this chicken and egg issue, which is that on the one hand, smart displays are still a very small percentage of smart, you know, overall smart speaker market share. So if you're a skill creator and you're considering whether to make a hefty investment in your time and resources to optimize your skill for a smart display, you might hold off on doing that mm -hmm. until there are more people with smart displays 
who could actually experience your Echo Show optimized skill. And Amazon absolutely senses this dynamic and they are taking steps to help close this gap. Yeah, that's a perfect kind of cue for us, you know, to, to lead into tomorrow because that's exactly what we're going to be talking about in this second part is how this really does start to open up some really interesting new use cases. I really want to dive into uh, Food Network Kitchen in particular. So before we wrap up, though, can you share with everybody the exciting new development from Voice Brew? Yes, and thank you, Dave, for giving me the opportunity to share this. Uh, I am very excited to announce that today we just launched the Voice Brew Alexa Tip of the Day Flash Briefing. This is a awesome new channel to deliver Voice Brew's daily Alexa tips. Flash briefings on Alexa make a ton of sense as a way to deliver content that helps people get the most out of Alexa. So I'm excited about this. Um, Voice Brew's briefings are going to be very short, about a minute long. They'll hit the key points of that day's Voice Brew daily email. We launched on Witlingo. They've been amazing to work with. I know, Dave, that you also work with Witlingo. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I've also gotten a ton of support from, you know, various flash briefing vets in the voice community. So big thank you to a number of people for encouraging me to do this and answering all my silly questions and giving me extremely helpful, you know, pointers in recent weeks and months. That's awesome. Well, it's so cool. I mean, it's like, uh, I feel like I'm like that, like that living, um, a living, you know, embolism of that Paul Rudd meme where he's like, Hey, look at us, look at us. Like I'm, I, I'm starting my podcast with my guests, you know, you're starting a flash briefing. Um, super cool. I'm, I'm really happy for you. And I think it's an awesome idea because it's like, you know, this is, it's such a great way to communicate uh, a lot of the same information that people have been using sort of traditional mediums to communicate. And uh, so I think that will really help you to kind of continue to grow your audience. Obviously you've already grown it well past 30,000 subscribers. So you're, you know, you're on your way, um, but awesome stuff. So for everybody, uh, that's all we got for today. We'll break. And then tomorrow we're going to talk all about the different use cases that multimodal is going to give rise to. So thanks for tuning in. We'll talk to you tomorrow. Thanks for tuning in today. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Future Ear Radio. For more content like this, just head over to futureear.co where you can read all the articles that I've been writing these past few years on the worlds of voice technology and hearables and how the two are beginning to intersect. Thanks for tuning in and I'll chat with you next time.